I think we're in a very good situation right now in prostate cancer, better than the 15 years I've been in the field in terms of new treatments for advanced disease. Uh, for many years, all we had was hormonal therapy, and once patients progressed on hormonal therapy, there were very, very few therapeutic options. So with the advent of uh, six or more of new approved therapies for castration-resistant prostate cancer, I think we're in some ways in an embarrassment of riches. The problem is that we haven't really figured out how these treatments should be sequenced, which treatment should come before uh, which other treatment. Uh, is there an optimal way to give these drugs? Are there patients in whom we shouldn't be giving one treatment? Uh, other patients in whom we should be moving the treatments even earlier. So to that extent, we're trying to figure out the next step now that there are so many new uh, types of treatments available for men with metastatic uh, castration-resistant prostate cancer. And uh, that, that really is around whether or not we should be giving these treatments in a very specific sequence. And the guiding principles that, that I take in my personal practice is really to start with what we think are the most effective treatments, the most effective available treatments with the least toxicity. This is, I think, a principle of oncology. If you have two drugs that are equally effective, but one is less toxic than the other, in general, we'll choose that. And I think that's one of the principles that I think we need to follow. Uh, the other is really about mechanism of action. One of the unique things about our situation right now is that we have drugs that have multiple mechanisms of action, uh, ranging from immunotherapy to cytotoxic chemotherapy to androgen pathway drugs to now uh, uh, radiation um, uh, uh, that basically is a, a radiopharmaceutical that goes to the bone um, and, and novel targeted therapy. So we have at least five mechanisms of action and we don't really know uh, how those should be sequenced because we don't know how they intersect with each other. But if we think about it, if, you, if a patient, for example, blows through hormonal therapies and doesn't seem to have a very androgen sensitive type of cancer, then using more hormonal therapies one after the other may not make as much sense as considering switching him to something like cytotoxic chemotherapy. Uh, we do know that drugs like uh, immunotherapies like Cipulus LT really should be used in very immunocompetent, healthier um, men. And so in that situation, generally speaking, you'd want to use those treatments in the earliest possible time when they're relatively asymptomatic um, and uh, have metastatic castration resistant processes.